my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing another video request. This video request has been in the queue for a little bit, so I want to make sure that I cover it. The request comes from Frugal and it says any chance you can do scripted. So we're going to be talking about an application named scripted and let's get to that. All right. So first, let's talk about what this application is. Their website is uh, www.scripted.com app it takes you here and it basically gives you uh, a little bit of information you click here which is what is scripted and it takes you to this website that says that scripted is an open source video integration platform that uses various plugins and scripted can receive streams from a range of cameras and send them to other platforms like HomeKit, google home alexa and home assistant so basically the main thing that this is supposed to do is to grab video streams from cameras and then send them to uh, home automation kind of platforms. So this makes it a little bit uh, hard for me because I do not use any of these services. So I can't really test that, but I'll try my best to at least get you a working uh, instance here and uh, then you can deal with uh, that and then get it working. Um, so basically they, have this application set in a way that you can create uh, install a bunch of different uh, plugins and then the plugins give you extra functionality so if you click where it says what is scripted in vr it takes you back here but to that section and says that scripted in vr is a plugin so one of those specific plugins that allows you to record 24 7. it does smart detections notifications and a comp it has a accompanying uh, mobile and desktop applications and they have a demo website that you can go and visit where you can kind of test it out and if you click there it's going to take you to the demo website i believe i have it here yep so this is a demo where you can basically watch some cameras that the developers i guess have have put somewhere you can see how the dvr works you click on a camera and you can view the live stream for that so there we go i mean it does what it's supposed to do and it takes snapshots so you can go to moments wherever you saw some kind of movement and stuff like that for example let's go to the front and then we click here and then we see that s snippet of the video when this person came in so that's pretty nice so that's what the application is for this is the main plugin that they talk about so now i want to cover some things here so it says it's an open source application they have a github repository and that is github.com slash kush slash scripted and basically it's very straightforward not a lot here what i did notice is that even though it's advertised as an open source application there's really a lot of paywalling behind the application so i'm gonna be honest with you uh frugal in my opinion instead of going through this if you have a synology nas just use the synology um system for recording meaning surveillance station it already comes with your nas it gives you a certain amount of licenses for free to plug in some cameras and it's plug and play basically this one you're you know starting an application and then you'll see that you can't really do anything unless you pay so let's go with uh, what we have here we've already saw, uh, seen the demo let me close that then if you go into the documentation they have minor documentation here that tells you how to install it but i don't like the way they set this up because they give you a command that basically downloads a script and then it runs that script and you don't really have direct access to the docker compose file so i basically had to look at this uh, shell file to find the location of the docker compose file which is this one and this is the actual docker compose file it's really convoluted because you know it's made assuming a lot of things so I'm going to honestly simplify this a lot so you can run this on a Synology NAS or maybe on a Raspberry Pi with Portainer or a computer. So it's a lot easier to read and handle than this. I'm going to be using the official image that is on Docker Hub. That's going to be Docker Hub uh, Kush slash scripted. And we're going to be using as usual the latest tag, which is one of the tags that they have. So now let's go and create our folder structure and then build a Docker project. For the file structure, I've already created it. It's pretty straightforward. We're gonna go into the Docker containers folder. We're gonna create a folder for scripted. Inside that folder, we're gonna create two folders. One of them is config, and that's gonna hold our 
scripted database and uh, the plugin information. And then the other folder is recordings. And that's going to be where it's going to store all the uh, NVR. So all the video recordings for the cameras if you pay for the NVR and you get the license and you set all that up. So those are the two folders that we need. Then we need to go into the projects and then in here we're going to create another one for a scripted. And that's where our Docker Compose file is going to reside. So this is all that we need to do for the folder structure that we need. Now let's go into the container manager, go into the projects and create a new project that is going to be named scripted. And I'm going to look for that path in the Docker projects that I just created. And I'm going to say I'm going to create a new Docker Compose file. I'm going to dump the contents of my Docker Compose and then we're going to be looking at it. So next, next, don't start the project done. And then we go here and we see it big in a big screen so we can know what is going on. All right. So we're defining services here. We're going to define one service, which is the scripted service. We're going to be using that image that I mentioned, the kush slash scripted and the latest tag. And we're going to make sure that the container is named scripted. And then we have to define environment variables to run the container. As usual, I'm going to be using the user ID of the first administrator that I created on my NAS because I know that that user has read and write permissions to all the folders that I have in my Docker um, volume here. And the default number is 1026 and 100 for the group for that user. If you're going to be using another user, you need to make sure that that user has read and write permissions to all the folders that you're going to be accessing. And you need to go into the NAS and run the ID command to get these values here. Now, in my case, my time zone is America, New York. So I'm going to put America, New York as usual. And then we need to specify here the environment variable that is going to tell the application where to store the video recordings of the cameras. So that's going to be inside the slash NVR inside the container. So that's all that we have here then there's this other flag here that was in the recommendations by the developer so if you actually plan to use this to broadcast sort of the cameras that you have to other devices like HomeKit and all that stuff then you need to enable this so that's going to enable the avahi daemon that is going to make it uh like your cameras are going to be viewed through this application by those other devices I'm not going to use that, so that's why I have it commented out, but I left it here so that you know what to do with it if you need it. Now, the volumes is the folders where we're going to put all our stuff. So I am mounting the configuration folder that we created into the server volume directory in the container because that's what it said in the repository that it's where it stores the database and all that stuff. So that's what I put there. Then for the recordings of our cameras, this is the folder in the NAS and I'm mapping that to the slash NVR inside the container. So those are the two folders that I'm going to specify. Again, this is commented out here, but if you need to use the Avahi daemon to expose your cameras and stuff, you need to probably provide this. I have not validated it, but that's what it says it needs. If you're going to be using the Avahi daemon, then this part here, you would have to uncomment it. And that's so that the security settings in the container allow app armor to run and allow Avahi to expose stuff. I don't need it, so I commented out like you can see here. And the part down here is you have two options, right? You can run this on the network host mode. So basically you don't have to expose ports because it's gonna be like if it's a running in the host in the machine instead of a container. I usually don't like to run things like this. So I looked up all the different ports that this application uses. And then I put a list here of all the different ports. In my case, I'm going to be using this. I'm going to be exposing the ports in the application into specific ports in the NAS. So the user interface, if it uses HTTPS, is going to be on 10.443. If you're going to be using HTTP, it's 11.080. And then this RTSP is another port that the application uses. That's on 10.444. And for the Avahi daemon, if you're exposing that, then it's 53.53. And then the RTSP is 5.54. Then these other ones here, actually from down here, all of this is related to plugins. So if you're enabling cer certain plugins, that's when you need all of these ports. That's why I have them commented out because um, I wasn't sure if I really needed them. But yeah, they're here in case you need it. These are like the core ones that you need for the application. So those are uncommented. And now we also want this container to restart unless we go and manually stop it. So this is all that we need. Uh, so now we can uh, save this and build the project 
and then I already downloaded the image so it's very straightforward really fast it started everything so now we can uh, clear out of this and then we should be able to see things here we see the database here so that's good and we're going to recordings there's nothing yet all right so now let's see how we can set this up so we are going to be accessing the port 10 443 in the uh, browser using HTTPS on the IP of the NAS so I had already started testing this before so this is why you see this right and this is what I wanted to highlight here and why I said I really don't see a benefit of using this application when in a Synology NAS you have surveillance station in order to use the NVR plugin which is basically what you want from this which is the ability to capture cameras and record video on a storage device you need to pay you need to pay for the plugin and I find this to be kind of ridiculous for an open source application so that's why I stopped right there and I didn't even try to continue setting up the application so let me go back into here IP of the NAS then uh, colon and then the port 10443 using HTTPS so we can see what you get originally we're gonna get here uh, not secure because the certificates that are gonna be using is something else it's not valid but we can click advance and ignore it and then it's gonna take us to the actual user interface and once you get here you have to create a user so I'm gonna set admin 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 and this is gonna be the account that you're gonna be creating the first account so you click here and then that creates the account and immediately as you can see it tells you you know if you want to actually be using this and get the benefits of it you need to install the NVR plugin so then you get here and you say okay install the NVR plugin nice so then you go here and then you say install it and then it says perfect you got the NVR you can store your videos now here you have this much space and all of that but guess what you have zero licenses you cannot plug any camera to your NVR that you just installed because why someone's greedy and they tell you right here this is a paid public beta so in order for you to use it you need to pay that defeats the whole purpose of uh, open source application so that's why I stopped immediately there so I'm not gonna pay for this so I'm sorry frugal but at least you got an instance here that is working so if you actually want to use this then go ahead pay for this and then you should just be able to go into the plugins section and search for a plugin for your cameras all right here we go you need to click here on the devices and then you see install a plugin and then for example in my case I have Amcrest cameras in my home so I could search for Amcrest and then it gives me the scripted Amcrest which is the plugin for the Amcrest cameras and I can just install it here and then that's gonna allow me to install an Amcrest camera here so just for an example let me set this up and uh, then we can see what you can see so I'm gonna put the username and then the IP of the camera and then add and when we do that then it adds my camera and as you can see here's my camera so it works it can connect to my camera but like I said we don't have any licenses for the MVR so it's useless at this point unless you pay for it but yeah the application is working you can use it the docker compose file that I'm gonna put in the link below is gonna work for you but I'm sorry like I said if it's a paid service that's as far as I'm gonna go it makes no sense to for me to try to set this up because like I said I'm not monetizing the channel so I'm not making money I'm not gonna waste money on this so I hope this was good enough for you to get it at least running on your system you can follow the same process because the docker compose file you can use it on any device it doesn't have to be a Synology NAS it can be anything else a QNAP or a Linux server or a Windows machine or anything so that should be enough to get you going and once you got get to this point here pay for the service and then you can configure everything and you know have fun with it so that's gonna be it for this one I'm really sorry that I cannot get all the way to you know showing you everything working but it's just the limitations of how this is working so if you did like the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so because that's really important helps us to grow exposes the channel and hopefully in in the future we can get sponsors and stuff like that so we don't have to go the route of just bombarding people with ads and uh, like I said I'm not monetizing the channel you should have not received an ad 
So I rely entirely on your support. If you like my content, you want to support me to continue creating good quality content for you. There's a link in the description below where you can donate using PayPal. Uh, there's also a Bitcoin ad, uh, wallet address that you can donate there if you want, if you prefer that way. Um, I shout out to the people that donate to the channel on the next video that I record from the moment that I get the donation. So be aware of that. Uh, I did notice that someone was not comfortable with me uh, shouting out their name. So if you don't want me to say your name, please add a note in there letting me know how you want me to address you when I give you the shout out. And yeah, that's going to be it for this one. I hope you liked it. I'll see you in the next one.